So that's how you build an opera house, outside and in. Except there's just one more thing, because, yep, it's a beautiful sculptural thing in a spectacular setting, and it's a place where concert goers really can just escape from reality. But how do you make sure they're comfortable while they're doing it? Well, the answer lies down there. On any given night, the Opera House can host not just opera, but ballet, drama and concerts of all kinds of music. Every morning, the theatres come alive as technicians prepare the stages for the shows. They check sound and rig lights. But a perfect performance requires something else. It's a warm summer's evening on the Sydney waterfront. People can wait months for tickets, and it ought to be a beautiful night out. You come into this extraordinary building. The excitement in this room around you is palpable. You're full of expectation. You take your seat. And then, no matter how hot the performance, if there isn't good air conditioning, you're going to be in misery. A room full of thousands of people heats up very quickly. Why should we care about all of this? Other buildings manage their air conditioning needs perfectly easily without making a fuss. Well, the answer to this takes us right back to where we started, that distinctive and unique shape, the sails. This outline just wouldn't have looked the same with a chimney or a fan deck or cooling towers poking out of the top, which is what large air conditioning systems usually need. So they needed a different solution. Thanks to a copper bottom sailing ship, the answer was all around them. All air conditioning systems need somewhere to get rid of the heat. If it can't go up a chimney, where does it go? Facilities manager Bob Moffat takes me underneath the opera house to show where they find an inexhaustible supply of something to take the heat away from the opera house. It's the water from Sydney Harbour. This is seawater. Indeed. So this presumably is, is the start of the whole thing, is it? That's right, this is the start. Um, basically, just over there, underneath, you'll see that that's the seawater intake tunnel. Yeah. Uh, it's about a metre high. It's where the water will enter into the building. And uh, the air conditioning process starts from there. I want to see how seawater can cool a theatre. Bob takes me into the bowels of the opera house. The seawater that we saw has, has come in here. It has. And what does it do? What happens to it then? Uh, it comes into these vessels here where we have the seawater and the fresh water, both in independent circuits of each other. Inside this large vessel are two sets of pipes carrying seawater and fresh water in completely separate circuits. Heat from the air conditioning system is brought out by the fresh water and is transferred to the cooler seawater. They never actually mix. The seawater comes in on this side, cools down the, the water that's inside the vessel, which is the fresh water, and goes out on the other side, out to the ocean. So that's it, it's not a lengthy stay for the seawater, it's no. in, cool that and out. Yep, very quick. But during that short visit, seawater can wreak horrible damage to the Opera House's expensive pipework. It's really corrosive stuff, which brings us to sailing ships. To protect 19th century wooden ships from wood-boring pests, the British Navy shields the hulls with copper. When they add the copper, they find that the iron nails holding the boat together rust. Fascinatingly, it's all to do with electricity, as corrosion expert Robin Oakley shows. Here's a piece of copper and here's a piece of zinc. So okay. they're two different metals. Now, put them together dry and there's no electricity flowing between them. However, if I put a bit of salty water between them... So it's just salty water in that cup? It's just salty water, just soaked into this piece of uh, blotting paper. Make a little stack. So now they're effectively just sandwiched... Well, the seawater is sandwiched by the two different metals, that's it? Yes. OK. And what I'll show you is we have bolts flowing. And it's the seawater making that possible because it's an efficient because effective it's... conductor. Connecting two metals in salt water makes a primitive battery cell. The bad news for ships and opera houses, it also makes corrosion. I'm going to show how some metals are prone to corrode, while others resist it strongly. The most resistant metal like that is gold. Um, doesn't corrode at all. 
because that gold's called a noble metal, and metals that are less noble, or active, uh, want to corrode. So copper is, is quite, quite noble. noble. Quite noble. You didn't bring a sheet of gold, I noticed. Didn't bring a sheet of gold, no. didn't think the budget would run to it. It could be difficult. OK, so that's quite a noble metal. Yes. What you've got is a more active metal. So we've got the painted steel plate um, with a suitable I see what you've motif. done. That's our opera house, yes, which uh, you painted on. So how will that affect things? Well, what will happen is um, the electrical current that's caused by the two metals is focused into the bare metal parts. So if we get an effect at all, we'll get an effect here. And yes. Like. The next step would normally take years, but we're all busy people, so we're going to speed this up a bit with a car battery. Fast forward a thousand times. We're going to accelerate the process in its natural direction, but just harder and faster. Is this bit dangerous? Relatively low voltages. Good. Relative. That's relatively low. Plus it's you doing it. And it's me doing it. So that's now why... Whoa! Look at that! What's that? What, why is that? What's happening? The copper plate isn't corroding. That's not corrosion. Corrosion's happening over here, but a bit slower. That is gas. We're actually breaking the water apart and it's giving off hydrogen gas, which is always spectacular and you can see it. 24 hours of furious fizzing later, and we have three years' worth of swamp. So this is it. Now we find out what's happened. Well, obviously all this stuff on the top, this is all basically rust. This is the steel's being corroded. It looks terrifying, it is. Yes. And now we'll find out exactly how much this accelerated corrosion has done to, to the plate. a steel plate. Whoa! Look at that, coming I mean, clean through. Yeah, I mean, corrosion has eaten away the Sydney Opera House out yeah. of the middle of that plate. Quite badly. So this is an example of how mixed metals in a conductive liquid like seawater, the electricity you get can be destructive and cause corrosion. The steel is eaten away because it's more reactive, less noble than copper. You protect the steel with a metal that's even less noble, which you sacrifice. We've got another tank that's fizzed for 24 hours with the same copper and steel. Only difference, some sacrificial zinc. What we've done here, we've got the same setup. We've also got a zinc block, which is electrically connected to this steel panel. So you've introduced a third metal in there. Yes. Let's see what it's done to the steel plate. So disconnecting that plate and it hasn't eaten through, I mean, nothing. No, it's done no. nothing to it. It's fine. It's just got a little bit of slime on the surface. And the difference in here is that zinc block. Yes. How's that work? Well, the zinc here is actually been corroding preferentially. It's been sacrificial to the steel. Actually, this isn't the original zinc block. Um, that's been eaten away already. We've had to replace it. So this whole thing becomes a system then, if you like, and you introduce that zinc into it. The zinc really wants to corrode more than anything else in that system. So Correct. it takes the hit. To stop those iron nails in copper bottom sailing ships corroding, they protect them with a less noble metal. Sir Humphrey Davy attaches zinc to the hull. It's sacrificed and renewed as necessary. And in Sydney, they protect their steel pipes from salt water by putting, yes, replaceable sacrificial zinc in the seawater circuit. This is the zinc blocks that we actually use to control their corrosion. So that's what protects it? That is. So this is then eaten away by this corrosive seawater. How much of it will it eat away? It'll virtually be all gone. You'll only be left with this small piece of steel which holds the block on. So that whole lot will go in how long? In 12 months, it'll all disappear. All eaten away, and that's protecting it all in here. Protecting all the steel inside the heat exchangers. Billions of litres of seawater have passed through the Opera House in 35 years of operation, but its air conditioning system is still uncorroded. Sydney opera goers can bathe in the music, not their own sweat, thanks to some bits of zinc on a copper bottom sailing ship. Best of all, Utsun's magical space keeps its distinctive profile.